interview with celebrity fitness trainer Davide Alfonsi. Hello. What's up, people? <laughs> He's here to talk about how you can get fit in the comfort of your own home and share some special tips and tricks for how to make it work best for you. I'm really excited to join him today. He's got some amazing energy. He's already done some amazing things today alone. So I hope that you find <laughs> this interview as inspirational as I already have. And um, a really cool thing is at the end of the interview, Davide will also be answering any questions that you, the audience, might have. So be sure to stay till the end for this special opportunity to get to talk with Davide one-on-one. -on -one. And while he's speaking, if you have any questions or anything pops up in your head, you might have uh, some thoughts about, just simply add them to the comment section and we'll touch on those at the end. All right, well, welcome Davide. Thank you so much for Thank joining. you, thank you. Thank you for having me. Hello, everybody. I see I, everyone I thank, so I see what you're writing. So excellent, excellent. Let's start. <laughs> yeah, great. great. Okay, I'd love for you, um, for those who are not familiar with you, could you give the audience a brief summary of who you are, what you do, and why you can help them achieve a change in their life? Okay, so my name is Davide, it's Italian name, right? Davide Alfonsi. Um, I used to be, uh, before this old COVID exploded, um, a fitness trainer, and I was working in the city of London, and mainly I was training uh, executives in the city, and a few people that you might see on TV or on Amazon Prime, so that's why the celebrity trainer, I uh, can't name it, but you know, they're there on TV, you've seen them. <laughs> and then this craziness uh, exploded, and uh, my wife was pregnant, so, we had a little baby four months ago and we decided to move to our homeland, Poland. So for the past six months, I've actually been specializing in online training and weight loss coaching, specifically for busy professionals that want to lose somewhere from 10 to 30 kilograms, that is 25 to 100 pounds. And especially someone that also has developed some sort of... Uh, illness uh, or like really serious health problem and during lockdown seems that people's health really went this way yeah, <laughs> so i've been really doing something that's really rewarding for me because uh, i just mm -hmm. really make people feel better you know not just muscles anymore <laughs> exactly exactly and so what you're saying is it kind of your life came together and culminated in this really great opportunity for you to help people that are feeling stuck at home i know so many people that have kind of given up on their fitness regimen that maybe they started out really great and then COVID came along and like you said, lockdown, and then they don't have anywhere to go to work out, um, which is really exciting because we have you to help them out. I've, I've been there. <laughs> I've yeah. been there. Uh, I can tell you actually, uh, since lockdown, so since end of March, okay, I've been to the gym four times. So, <laughs> so I had to do everything from home uh, and I had to just, you know, rewire myself, my belief and my training system to what can I do in the house with, first of all, when I was in lockdown, nothing, right? Because all dumbbells were sold out. So to get a pair of dumbbells, I would need to wait three months. <laughs> so what can I do with my body? And I cannot even exit the house. Uh, and secondly, uh, okay, how can I improve? That was another big one, right? Because uh, no, it was just not maintain. I'm just, I don't want to maintain. I'm looking to improve, right? Different areas of my particular fitness. And uh, as I said, I've been four times to the gym in the last five months and still there. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I think I figured it pretty well. And uh, I think and you so were. That must have been a, a, a big mindset sh shift for you, right? Mm -hmm. to... I was so afraid. I think everyone that, like, you know, everyone that was used to go to the gym, you go, like, what am I going to do now? I'm lost. Uh, that's funny because uh, technically what I actually realized is that like a trip to the gym will take me two and a half hours to three hours uh, and I get the same result in 30 minutes from my living room. <laughs> in between work tasks. So I'm like, wow, this is real efficiency. Uh, yeah, You cannot lift a ton of weight. That's the problem if you live in a flat, especially. <laughs> but at the right. same time, you all different fitness like moving really slowly so you get the same intensity on your muscle if all you want is to look good if all you want is to be healthy so you want is like to just have the dopamine rush so it's on your mindset as well just don't feel like a larva and then your productivity goes 
There's, there's many different aspects of fitness, right? If someone has been exercises regularly and stops, you notice that things start to crumble. Like yeah. they're demotivated, that they're snappy at their partners, so they're more hungry than before for whatever reason. Uh, and then they wake up and they're so tired and they want to go back to bed. It's like the machine stops running. Right? The energy just goes out of the window. Uh, so even something as simple as like, you know, I have a daughter, so I pick up my daughter. And if I don't have time, I do 20 squats with her. Uh, yes. I feel better, right? I feel better. I'm sweating a little bit. I just dry my sweat. And, <laughs> you know, it really, really, really makes a big, big difference. And for all the, you know, all the former gym goers, I know you are in the US and gyms are not opening yet. So everyone, everyone is experimenting plan B in all its different forms. Um, video courses, live videos. I personally, when I came here to Poland, I started um, a community that is called, uh, like my book is called the Busy Yet, ooh, here, Busy Yet Community. It's a private community. And my idea was very simple. I was like, well, I'm two weeks stuck in this house. I can't even go out. Out, um i'm gonna train and i'm alone i have no friends so what do i do i'll just invite all my friends to group and i stream my workouts because i will do it anyway right and right. what happened is right. it, how will I, more and more and more people asking me to join they will follow my workout and then people texting me privately um what do i do to lose weight everyone what do i do to lose weight because everyone's gaining weight in their yeah place. absolutely uh, no, it's like I'll just instead of, instead of replying to everyone, I was like, you know what, just uh, wait, wait like a few days. I'm gonna write down like a very simple guide. Uh, you follow this, and 100 percent you're gonna lose three to five kilograms in the next four weeks. That in pounds it would be uh, seven to seventeen pounds, right? In the next four weeks, 100 percent guaranteed if you follow. And my idea was uh, to rethink both fitness from gym fitness to home fitness and to rethink nutrition from uh, the typical approach that is small meals in proteins and carbohydrates low in fat uh, that doesn't work if you stay in house, right? You don't move enough. Mm -hmm. So to something that is way more practical, that is also geared towards improving your health because now health is a precious commodity. We learned that, right? We didn't have health, risk a lot. Right, so now health is probably uh, at this level with fitness. When before it was like, I just want to look good, right? I don't care what it takes. When now people are like, you know what? Like I want to look good and feel good and be bulletproof. Right. Uh, I don't want to get COVID. I don't want to get COVID and just you know pass out. Uh, so I think there's there's a shift, and my shift was like, okay, how about we found a system that is easy for everyone to follow because uh, nobody likes to diet. That's why there's the word die in it, <laughs> right? Everyone wants something that is flexible and that is geared toward maximum health. So uh, what I've been using for an, one year and the results are insane with clients and especially because of the compliance it is this intermittent fasting regime, right? Mm -hmm. That is basically like you don't eat for a certain amount of hour that, you know, you start slowly, you start with 12, and then you get all the way to 16 or 20. And you just have like, a, you can have coffee, you can have green tea, you can have water. What happens? You have this very long time where you stop eating. Maybe the first or second days are a little bit hard, you're hungry, but then you get this surge of energy and mental focus. So you can actually do some meaningful work from home because laziness seems to be like, you know, uh, <laughs> seems to be the norm now with working from home and i get it because you're not moving you're not commuting so your energy is low already to begin with and with this little trick you stimulate a process that is called ketosis that i can explain a little bit more but just imagine that like you feel like running on jet fuel and you really like focus and you have like this nice nice brain focus and then later on you don't need to just watch what your wife's cooking you can eat pretty much whatever if you want to maximize there are certain food you can avoid uh if you don't care well you skip breakfast and you burn so much more calories you can catch up with some extra and at least even if you didn't get any movement because you're so busy and that's something that I find hilarious. Now, people don't commute anymore. So they have two hours more a day, but right. they work two more hours than when they were going to the office. So technically they work four more hours a day for free. <laughs> I don't know how this yeah. starts up. That's interesting. So let's, let's talk about that intermittent fasting 
that came up for you around the same time you're saying as you're stuck at home. Um, that's something that I didn't even real. I, I learned the term a couple years back, but yeah. I didn't realize I was doing it. Um, I was always one of those people that just <laughs> never really ate breakfast or ate yeah. later. Um, but I absolutely agree with you. There's, it gives you this, um, it's like a boost yeah. of energy yeah. and clarity in your mind. Um, and then of course, what happens to me is that by the time I'm ready to eat something, I'm are, I'm I'm kind of magnetically drawn to eating healthy, n- nutrient dense foods. However, yeah. if I want pizza or a burger or something like that, then that's okay too. You can fit, right? You can fit exactly. exactly. Yeah. It's not it's not the everyday burger. Like that's not what I'm saying. <laughs> but you can go a little more. And as you said, like you just switch from. Something that is cravings and emotional appetite that usually gears towards carbohydrates, chocolate, sweet, bread, pasta, uh, to like, I'm, I'm genuinely hungry, give me real food. <laughs> that is like a nice, nice feeling. Now, most people, unfortunately, uh, or fortunately, I would say fortunately, they had to learn how to cook real food. <laughs> at this point, because it's not everywhere anymore. Yeah, you can deliver, but you're not going to deliver your lunch, right? It's too expensive. Uh, right. <laughs> so they, they learn how to cook some eggs, right? And it's like, oh, wow, that's the best thing you can do for your health. <laughs> Guess what? <laughs> because you are in control of the portion, mm-hmm. you're in control of the ingredients, so you know where you got them from. Uh, so that's it, right? You're in control. If you're in control, you're also in control of the results. Right. Right. So, okay. So the first part then is think about the food that you're putting in your body and when you're putting it into your body. So you're very mindful about the process of eating, right? The second part, which I'm sure a lot of the audience is wondering, okay, Davide, that sounds great. um, (laughs) But how on earth am I supposed to get in shape like you are in in the comfort of my house? I have a one bedroom apartment, um, barely any room. What do I do? Yeah. What would you do? Same, same guys. <laughs> same. So what what's what's the catch, right? Um for sure there's one part that is motivation and mindset, and the other one that is technicalities of training. Let's start with motivation and mindset because probably that comes first. So imagine a big gym, right? Uh you have like a 20% or 15% of really gym rats, like, you know, people like me, they will go there to do a three hour workout religiously at the same time, planning their food and everything around. That's a 10, 15% of the gym goers. That is 1% of like general population, I would mm-hmm. say. And then you have all the rest, right? And all the rest, generally, what do they like? Cardio, fitness classes, right? Fitness classes, why? Um, there's a vibe, there's a group. There's a power of a community. It's at a certain time you cannot miss it. So there's also the accountability. Some some other bits, they like a personal trainer, right? Same thing. So friendship and then uh, is a certain time. So you all have the accountability of the trainer and it's also expensive. So you got to do it. <laughs> and then and then you have some people that they go there and they don't know what they're doing. And usually those one quit very early. Uh, so what are we missing at home? We are kind that are missing uh, the accountability and the power of the community. So the best thing people can teach themselves is to wake up and get it done, right? First That's thing. why like in, in, in the course that we created with LifeHack, I especially say like, get it done in the morning. Like mm-hmm. wake, wake up and do it, wake up and do it because things can snowball mm-hmm. and you don't want things to snowball. And something, something as well, like, you know, that like we're, we're talking training, we're talking results. Uh, you're not going to get results if you don't get your daily steps. And this is a big, big part of any program. I'm like, let's imagine your body like a triangle. Okay. So we have three areas. One, we have nutrition that we spoke about and we can explore even more. And the other one is movement. When I say movement, uh, I say, are you using the body as a human being? So are you walking, picking up things first? And then second is like exercise. Exercise is a complement to general movement. Because if you don't do general movement, you you will see me so often if you're like one of my clients or one of my friends, I will do a video call like this and I will be walking around the house while I call just to make sure I meet my daily steps. And then, and then you know, there's an emphasis on doing it outside simply because there's power and there's plenty of science in it. With, 
being outside, right? Like being outside, catching the sunlight helps you synchronize your brain, your circadian rhythms and your body towards day and night. Because when it's day, your body secretes certain hormones. When it's night, your body secretes certain hormones. Now we gear intermittent fasting towards these daily rhythms. Mm -hmm. So if you are going to bed at 3 a.m. and you wake up at 12, intermittent fasting is not really going to catch very much because you lose the window of growth hormone and testosterone release that happens during the night from 11 until 1 a.m. That's where you have the most deep sleep naturally. Mm -hmm. And you release these hormones. And you also miss the release of cortisol, that is your fat burning hormone, that you, when you're fasting, it really burns a ton of fat that is higher at 6 a.m. And you're sleeping when this happens. So it, it really messes up your system. Now, I know most people don't wake up at 12, but, but I know many people that they go to bed at 2 and they wake up at 8.30 just to start work at 9. Yeah. Now, you switch their sleeping time maybe 30 minutes a week to something like 11 7 or 10 30 6 30 they lose more weight than when they try to diet with a horrible diet themselves that's fascinating yeah. really so you optimize the load. yeah so you're <laughs> saying that that on top of obviously the eating and then being able to work out on top of that our sleep cycle our sleep habits are critical to just us. management habits, I call them, more than sleep. Because sleep, sleep is the result of uh, many things, right? Sleep is the result of your stress level, is the result of are you building melatonin because you saw the sunlight and you saw the sunset uh, and you're getting, genuinely getting tired uh, and is also the result of can you breathe? Like, as you know, I just had a nose surgery <laughs> two weeks ago uh, because I get sleep apnea for my... Uh, basically, my nose was malformed from the inside. Uh, so my, my sleep was compromised despite having all the sleep apnea in the world. And despite um, having learned myself how to just stay very relaxed, like I'm actually quite relaxed by nature. But uh, imagine that I probably spoke. So in my private community, we have 2,300 members. Right now, I sent a private text to everyone. And I will say 90% of people, they have some problems sleeping since lockdown. Okay. Right? And this this is, is a mix of like uh, uh, lack of movement and lack of sunlight outside. Lack of training, if they were training, because you sleep much better when you exercise, for sure. Um, Probably nutrition, I will say, because you can you can do quite a bit with certain and uh, essential nutrients. So, pretty much, uh, if you have a diet full of certain vitamins and minerals, then your sleep functions are optimized, right? But then stress, stress is the big one because yeah. stress said basically as what's my life is going to be that creates stress. And then I am at home with my partner all the time and we maybe we clash a little bit that causes stress. Yeah. And then I'm not relaxed because I don't exercise anymore. I don't see the sunlight that causes more stress. And they're giving me more things and new things to do at work or even worse, I don't have a job, <laughs> okay? And that causes more stress. Now, when you experience this uh, sort of sensation of like, what am I going to do, right? Um, your body is depleting a lot of substances that are used to create neurotransmitters. Neurotransmitters are uh, so substances that in your brain helps communication. Mm -hmm. And over lockdown, most people have depleted quite a lot of these neurotransmitters. And this results in waking up at 3 a.m., looking at the ceiling, and they can't go to bed, right? Right. I've been there. <laughs> for nutrition, removing carbohydrates or just lowering and increasing uh, natural fats rich in choline, like uh, I have it all in my program, right? Like egg yolks, uh, free range meat. Uh, uh, it could be it could be some 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 full fat dairy as well. Then your neurotransmitter replenish, and guess what? You sleep better, right? Mm -hmm. If you if you're super deprived, you can actually take the supplement, right, and and get and get and get straight to like um, something like melatonin, okay, and you take it for some time. But you know, like if you start with real food, generally you get much better results. That's why, right, right. Anything that can be produced naturally by the body is going to be better than the supplement that we're taking. I, I work with both, right? Because why not? Yeah. <laughs> because why yeah. not? Yeah, like you see, the, the way I'm speaking is like we have a a castle to mount that is made of bricks, like Lego bricks. And uh, the bigger 
the columns, right, out of this tree. Like you need to move, uh, you need to be outside and reduce your stress level. And nature is amazing for that. And then you need to eat real food. Once you have those three, we can stack on top many things, right? We can stack, okay, how do we train? And this is how I generally create my training, by the way. How do we train around the movements that now we do all day? Now, what do we do all day? This. We sit. Right. <laughs> so what's going on? Like our shoulders are rolling forward. You're getting a lot of tension here, a lot of tension here. The back is actually stretched, so it doesn't work. It loses strength. And then same happens with the back of your legs and your bum. And then you get tension in your hips. So like, what can we do, right, that really brings us back here to mm -hmm. open straighten the posture open our hips when we train the lower body as i do in my program i teach like a, a pretty short yoga routine just a few poses because they take your body through the opposite dimensions that we should do every day so you just make sure that you don't create too much tension and then you focus on the breath that is extra important like every program that i make is super focused on the breath because first of all you want to burn fat you burn fat not by consuming calories. That's too vague. You burn fat through oxygenation. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I learned that the other day. I was <laughs> <laughs> so so if you don't get enough oxygen by properly breathing, then uh, you're not gonna burn fat. And guess what? When everything is tight like this, you don't have the capacity of expanding your lungs because the diaphragm is also tight. A couple of yoga poses every day, they fix that. And then you go into squat, lunges. Uh, um, what do we do body weight, right? You do squat, lunges. You can do single leg exercises. You can do upper body exercises if you have the strength. If not, you change gravity, right? Because right now you are not fighting weights and cables. You're fighting gravity with your body. So you need to just figure out, okay, how can I make, this is a press up, right? Floor, body. How can I make it easier? Mm, knees on the floor. Now there's less gravity, right? There's less weight. How can I make it harder? Feet on a sofa. And I go like this. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Right? So easy as that. Like, honestly, you can get creative, right? You, you're getting really good. Backpack, put books in it, right? You want to train your biceps. Sometimes in my group, I get people to get like the grocery bags, fix the books, and there you go. And you do some biceps. Like, and eventually, if you see yourself doing some exercise for three weeks straight, open your wallet, it's $40, get some dumbbells, right? And then with that, to I need to go to the gym, you have one or two years of consistent training and consistent progress, for sure. Easy as that. You kind of need to learn how to do the exercise in a certain way, but how do you learn? If you pay someone to coach you or you get a course, isn't it? <laughs> that's, that's how I would learn if I want to do scuba diving or tennis or golf, right? I wouldn't try to do it myself. That's one mistake of fitness, I believe. Um, people play a video and... Uh, she's a madonna's trainer and she's super fit and she's like she's shoulders bigger than me and they try to do what she's doing i'm like and, and they never did anything i'm like so hard and i'm like yeah no shit. sorry <laughs> you can meet this but <laughs> yeah you can just start at at a level that you, you it, it's just like anything else right yeah because like I, I i get it right so people that are really fit and they have a big following um you know they can do pretty crazy stuff with their body because they're used to lift so much weight but just normal person honestly if i do an online personal training session with someone that hasn't worked out for a year we do two sets of 20 lunges and two sets of 20 squats they're done they're done and they, can, and they can't walk for three days right. so 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 like what's your 40 minute heat workout gonna do right mm -hmm. you're just gonna do everything with a horrible form inflame your joints burn a little bit of calories but that's it Right. And then and give up. Soon as yeah. you, it, you didn't build any muscle, get the weight all back. That's why I'm not a fan of this crazy fast hit circuit. When I do a workout, I get people, okay, this is the movement. These are the muscles you're working. These are the angles. Move slowly. Can you feel it? Can you feel it? Yes. Go again. Mm -hmm. like there's no fast movement. It's all slow. It's all with the breath. So you own the feeling. Once you own the feeling, you know how to do it. If you're just moving then this is a uh, dancing right it's not training we want to do training that's what really builds the muscle from home learning to feeling this contraction so if, if you're doing this where's the camera here i can see i have a bicep if you're doing this <laughs> i can feel something that does i can do it super hard and 
it actually hurts, right? Uh, most people, they don't know how to get to, ah, ooh, this must really hurt when they do exercise. Uh, and they need to move very slowly. And then they right. get it. You know? right. Imagine, have you, have you ever done, a, the first time you've done a yoga lesson, and and they, they, they get you in this pose, and it's like, oh, my God, my legs burn so much. Yeah. Well, what are you doing? Nothing, right? What are you staying still? Right. You're, yeah, you're concentrating on it. Speed doesn't get you to feel that sensation unless you're an experienced, mm -hmm. uh, I, I would say. Uh, and then you can contract with speed. Like people that do CrossFit, right? They're, they're amazing. Um, they'd be crazy like my wife, but they are amazing. <laughs> uh, when, when people that do a normal fitness class, uh, they don't really know the sensation. If they do 60 reps, it starts to burn or maybe burn somewhere else and they just they don't realize because they're, they're doing it fast. Um, people do a need class. Uh, someone that has been with a personal trainer for as much as two months, they know how to feel because the guy will go like, move slowly, move slowly. Can you feel? Can you feel? Can you feel? Yeah, push. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, and then, you know, you, you don't need it forever. Uh, most people that have a trainer forever is either they have enough money to don't care or um, they just can't get the motivation themselves. Mm -hmm. It's a really of knowledge any good trainer can teach you how to train in six seven lessons gotcha yes. right then then you know planning a program and all the nitty-gritty things uh obviously there are different level of expert for different level of results that you want to get but the basics basics can be learned with a course but you need to move slowly so that's that's the probably the biggest thing that people don't do they try to go fast 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 you can do a lot in 30 minutes by moving slowly Right. So don't rush into your new fitness regimen. You really got, you, you got to take the time to um, yeah, ease your I don't, I, don't, I don't think I meant that. Uh, you, you can rush, meaning do you want to work out every day? That's, mm -hmm. That right. would be rushing. And I will argue, if that's not a habit and you try to do something as fitness every single day, you're going to burn out. So I, I definitely agree with that. Um, but the difference between gym training and home training is that to get the result, you really need to learn how to move slowly, right? Oh, wow. So okay. if I'm doing a squat, sorry, right? If I'm doing a squat, I'm not doing like this, right? I'm doing stop, push, okay. right? So that. That's that, that's pretty different because I felt every single um, every single muscle working. Mm -hmm. If I'm going up and down, up and down, up and down, what, what I'm feeling is my knees, my knees, my knees, my knees, my knees, and they, and they hurt. So it just goes on the joint. That's that's how you get much more calorie consumption and muscle building uh, from something that is just your body weight by moving slowly. Interesting. The so you're point, saying, go ahead. <laughs> the other point was like don't don't rush into it. Yeah, the program that I design is one step the time so the science says this you try to implement one habit a week you have 95 percent chances of succeeding you try to implement two you have 35 chances of succeeding you try to implement three you have five percent chances so if i'm telling you can you habit movement habit number one can you do one workout a week Nobody's going to say, well, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll do it. I'll try, right? Uh, two, I would say two sort of goes in the category of one habit. But six, six is a lot. Six is a lot. So your chances of success are maybe you're super motivated, you do it the first week, but the second week, you won't. What does that mean? That you did not create a habit. So technically, you failed. When if you did one workout a week this week, next week, I'm sure you'll do one again. And yeah. maybe you can do two. Right. right, and then the third week maybe you can do three, and then the fourth week maybe don't be greedy, increase the length. Right, mm -hmm. see the course that we made together. It begins really easy. It's ten minutes yoga, fifteen minutes, just two exercises, but they're hard and they're done proper. The week after is ten minutes yoga and three exercises. The mm -hmm. week after is ten minutes yoga, and then there's three exercises but more sets of the same mm -hmm. exercise. So I'm not giving new things because the brain needs to learn this pattern of movement needs to learn it very well 
but I give them more because then the body is able to take more. It's getting fitter, it's getting stronger. Uh, and then the fourth week is four workouts, right? And then instead of being three exercises, there are four exercises and they're also more sets. So we went from 25 minutes to 45 minutes. But we took four weeks, right? To get the body, to get the body ready. This is from a super beginner but again uh, having having the tools i mean of course right if you do the first work and it's too easy you go like, okay go to week four trust me it's not gonna be easy right. <laughs> okay. not. so that's that's great i was that was gonna be my next question um so this is your specialization um you do this obviously for a living it's something that you're very passionate about um can you describe a little bit about how you've partnered with life hack to um, deliver a full program that can help people get fit at home and do exactly what you described okay so that's a funny story right uh the story is as i said uh, i've been writing for life hack for more than a year and a half uh, and then you know, when we, we launched my book in january and i've been on a podcast and everything and um i just got another article from life so i was writing this article and then a few weeks before this very weird thing happened that i started streaming my work and i had all my friends and then friends pointing to other friends and everyone was joining and i was having all these messages because i wrote this little guy saying like uh you know you're gonna eat this way, follow this particular system, do these daily steps, do this stress management test, and then follow my workouts, right? Uh, Monday I do this, on Tuesday I do this, and you can just pick up, come and join, or do the replay. And I get text and I'm like, I'm week number two, 2.5 kilos, that's six pounds down, and then another one, and it's like, uh, lost five kilos. And I'm like, wow, this week three, like, because I did it for myself, because, changing uh, country and my wife and the baby i actually gained seven kilos some i just I, I wanted to lose weight myself and i just throw a challenge i'm like can we just lose five kilograms together in the next four weeks i tell you how to do it and i'll do exactly the same thing any doubts just text me just follow me in my workout and everyone was losing so much weight and i'm like wow i'm up to something like this is crazy it was literally just just like a pdf shitty like i wrote it like this uh, and, uh, and I was like, okay, we are up to something. So I just texted um, Simon, that is one of your colleagues, right? He's a lifer. And uh, I was like, well, you know what? Like, I have this guide and this guide and this guide. Uh, um, and the only thing I need to do is to film some exercises that I've been doing. And I know for sure that like people lose a lot of weight with this in four weeks. It's just straightforward. And I was like, oh, we're up to something. So we started to create this. And uh, as I created it, I kind of improved and tweaked. But it was all based on real life experience of my friends and clients losing weight online period yeah. so i didn't make anything uh, um, out of the blue i was like well i did this i lost weight they lost weight let's just put it on paper and on camera and this this this, this is how we created call it busy at fit at home because people want to be busy at fit at home these days <laughs> yeah, they do. and they need to i mean this is um COVID's brought an interesting time of pause to a lot of our lives and reflection. And like you're saying, the, the urgency to pay more attention to our health and our wellness. Um, and all of, I, I love what you're talking about, how the program itself goes through this incremental progress, because we talk a lot about progress-based goals at Lifehack and how, yeah, you can't just expect to be a millionaire overnight or, or any big goal that you might have, but you can make <laughs> Yeah. Little steps to work up to that goal. Um, and just like you, um, someone that's completely new to fitness, sure, you might not look like Davide tomorrow if you, if you start this program, but over yeah. time, you're saying it's absolutely possible, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's absolutely. I, I, I don't look that good. It's just lighting, by the way. <laughs> Very good. I, I used to. I used, I used to wear when I was doing photo shoot and modeling and stuff. Now uh, I, I have a very functional looking body. <laughs> and our father body, father's body. No, yeah. no, no. There's one. There's one thing to say about this, right? Um, that is like there's people that have the mentality, I'll do whatever it takes to get there, and when. When that was about, uh, when it was about work and money, I think this mentality is still there. Uh, about fitness, people are stepping back, right? Because they realize, like, I can't do well, anything, anything just to have that particular looking body, because that means compromising health. And now I like to say that actually healthy is the new fit. Mm -hmm. So the difference between healthy body and a fit body, I think a healthy body is 
intrinsically a body that doesn't have a lot of body fat, right? So we're not, we're not talking super jacked, but that's the thing. Like too much body fat is a sign of compromised immunity because you only store too much body fat when you have compromised bodily function in your digestion and in your brain function and in your fat tissue. Uh, so the problem is that like you can actually have a quite unhealthy diet and get to a really skinny body, right? So by overtraining and under eating, and that was uh, a big thing, has been a big thing for many, many, many years. And I don't think people uh, are signing up for that anymore. I think pe people are realizing that like, I cannot look good and feel shit. I need to look good and feel good. Maybe not look super good, but look decent, but feel good because that's more important. And uh, I mean, this me being a father right now is like way, way more. Like I, I don't care if I don't have veins that they go from my belly button to my genitals. Uh, okay. I used to, but I, I don't care. Now I don't care anymore. I try that. Yeah. Go to the farmer's market, get the freshest vegetables and meat and cook it and I don't count the calories because I don't care, right? Because my, my, my currency now is health, it's not body fat. And uh, people are starting to get that. And intermittent fasting, right? So this particular nutritional system gets people there gets people there because you don't need to see food as a bunch of numbers, right? But you start to see food as health. And what is food and health is like generally all food, all food. And you, you can, you know, when, when you see results, and this is something you can see in everything and probably you teach the life work as well, it starts to snowball, right? You want to know more, you want to do more, okay? Uh, and, and the way I teach people through fitness uh, is like fitness should improve your life, not consume it. So what does that mean? You don't want to go all in and feel guilty because you skipped a workout, right? You want to find a fitness regime that makes sure that you can get these workouts done, but doesn't interfere with your highest values. That could be your job. That could be your family. That could be your passion. If your passion and your job is fitness, then yes, you can go that way. But I think people are starting to be mindful. That is like, uh, I also want to be doing this job for the next 30 or 40 years. There's a lot, a lot of uh, very famous fitness people that died last year, right? In their 40s, 50s. In the 40s, it was like, uh, there's a guy called Charles Polygon who was the most famous uh, strength coach in the world. And he was preaching health here and there. He died of heart attack at 59. And it's like, this is clearly going too much one side. And these people... Uh, they did sport and work, right? Mm -hmm. And and you need to understand, like, sport is stress and work is stress. So if you do little sport, that decreases your stress. If you do a lot of sport and a lot of work and you wake up at four, right, and you go to bed late, uh, you, you're just going to die at 69, right? So <laughs> COVID or not, despite being super fit and super jacked. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So that's a that's a really good point too. That that balance is important, um, and not going too far in one direction, whether it's being too fit or too unfit. Um, what your program will offer is a nice way to holistically bring all of that together in a program that works specifically for the individual, right? Yeah, it's more specifically we need it because technically you can do whatever you want, but like you don't train more than so. Um, you do, at the end of the program, if you do everything, you don't train more than two and a half hours a week. So you get all the benefits of going to the gym four times, right? That it will take you three per four, right? 12 mm -hmm. hours. <laughs> because you go there and you have a chat and you have a shower and there's a commute and everything. And you get the same benefit pretty much. Uh, but how many times, how many hours did you just gain? And right. what do you wanna do? You, you're super into fitness, dedicate those hours to studying. Right, you send me a text, a private message, or an email, I'll give you a bunch of books. You read those and you're like, Oh my god, okay. Yeah, <laughs> now, now I know you're into something else, you want to become a millionaire. I, good luck, but <laughs> yeah. right? just go there, right? Pursue your business, pursue your idea. And again, like, uh, I think something that people maybe are starting to do more and some really uh, value more is studying, right? Because I'm giving you. The basic, but when you see that it's working, get hungry, learn a little bit more, right? You get more results. Like that's it starts with like every time I want to learn anything, I'll, I'll make you laugh. I am hiring, I am hiring a nutritionist, right? I paid him a thousand pounds. <laughs> that is a lot of money for three hours because that is 
someone that charges three times more than me, basically, but he knows three times more than me, right? And I, I, I have so many questions for that person. And I know that every time I do this, right, I, I went to switch my business, I got a business coach, right? Um, I, I, when I'm going to go back to gym, I'm going to I'm going to find a power lift coach, right? Someone that perfects what I'm doing because it just is so exponential when you start to invest a little bit in yourself, the results, whether uh, is with a person, with a course, uh, or with a group, is so exponential the results compared to what most people do that is stagnation. They yeah. do the same thing at the same level, at the same intensity, getting the same results, hoping that one day they get better. That's terrible. Like this, yeah, no, no <laughs> like you know, like you get excited by seeing progress. Uh, you don't get excited by just staying the same and hoping not to get worse. Like, it's not, it's not it should be with fitness or anything else in life, isn't it? Yeah, that's a, that's a really great, uh, great point to bring up as well. So, okay, you've talked a lot about uh, some really wonderful things, and I'm going to come back in a moment, and we can kind of recap for anyone that's interested in joining the course, how they can do that, what, what they should expect. All that great stuff, but let's take a minute to um, look at the questions that have come in, and if you oh, yeah. okay. uh, are open to uh, more questions coming in, then, then please have the audience. I, I, I see, yeah. Okay. Uh, just give me a difficult to understand. Can someone please tell me how long is this video chat? Okay, we got one here. Why is it hard for me to lose weight, and uh, why is my well my belly not going in? This is uh, a bead. Um, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I've still got a big and wobbly stomach. Need your advice, please. Okay, so I'll start with that. So a bead. Um, first of all, you have no control where you're losing fat. So uh, you might have very stubborn belly fat, and you might be losing fat from your face, from your chest, and from your thighs. First, if you are moving more and eating better slash less, okay? Um, now, if there is a problem of specifically belly fat, this is often related, okay, to insulin sensitivity. That means you have been eating over a prolonged period, years, too many carbohydrates. Now, a bit, I don't know where you're from, but if you're from Southeast Asia, I have a feeling that is uh, rice-based, okay? So you might have had too many uh, foods that are like rice, carbohydrates, bread, pasta, or sweet, right? Stuff that contains sugar. Um, throughout the day, four years. What happens is that our body cannot take so much carbohydrates without producing a lot of insulin. And insulin is produced by the pancreas behind the liver. And as any organ, it gets old if you push it too much. So what you do instead, you try something like intermittent fasting, right? Where you don't touch your liver and your pancreas for 16 hours because there's no food coming except water in you for 16 hours. You give it a break and the engines start to burn your fat and the engines start to just get a little bit better and your organs are rejuvenating because you stimulate growth hormone as well by fasting that rejuvenates your organs and your tissue so that's definitely one way to go like start with this intermittent fasting and then maybe try to eat your carbohydrates once a day instead of two or three times a day right in one single meal with the dose that is uh, if you in my course, I say, let's use the hand system, right? Your plate should be one fist. That's your portions of protein, okay? That could be eggs. Uh, if you're vegetarian, that could be like your beans, your lentils, for example. Then when you have it, so not always, but when you have it, and generally I like to say exercise and eat your carbs. When you have it, there should be a size of your palm like this, right? Not with the fingers, just like this. It could be like rice, it could be pasta, it could be potatoes, it could be tubers, right? And then the rest of the plate, stuff it with vegetables. You can cook them or you can eat them raw. They have different functions, right? If you eat them raw, uh, it's functional fermenter. So they ferment in the stomach, they feed certain gut bacteria. They may help you go to the toilet. They may help you uh, absorb other food better. They may even help you be happy. Right, because uh, serotonin, that is a happy hormone, 90% is produced in the gut. That's why you have a gut feeling, <laughs> because you are happy when your gut is happy. <laughs> Try to talk to someone that has stomach pain and see if they're happy. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> to share the same place. Yes. <laughs> and uh, uh, to improve sleep anxiety, etc., uh, breathe through the nose. See uh, Patrick McMahon for Oxygen Advantage. Also, see oh, Oxygen Advantage is a great book. Um, I agree with the guy. Uh, this is why I had a nose surgery, by the way. <laughs> uh, I think what he's saying is like, I, I will not say to improve sleep anxiety. I think to improve sleep in general. Uh, you can, I guess, improve your anxiety by doing mindful breath, right? So something that is uh, called coherent breath. You can you can look at it. There's a, uh, there's a lot of science, coherent breath. That is basically six breaths per minute through the nose. They, they did a study where they picked uh, different monks, monks from like Tibet, monks from India, monks from Japan, and they just studied their meditation and they were all synchronizing to these six breaths per minute through the nose and it seems to really uh, stabilize certain waves in the body so you feel very calm and very rational. So you don't have to be rational for going with you. You do that for five, six minutes before bed, for sure you fall asleep better. Now, waking up in the middle of the night anxious, that is different. That could be uh, a sum of many, many things that are happening in your life right now and depletion of neurotransmitters. Uh, the thing that seems to help with my clients, it will be a cycle of four weeks where you take L-tyrosine, that is an amino acid that stimulates dopamine, and 5-HTP, that is something that uh, girls generally take when they have their period because it stabilizes their mood, because it promotes serotonin. And you take it in the morning, uh, in lunchtime, and in the evening. Uh, you start with low dose, and then you build it up because you should feel it straight away. And that should help. That should help over a month. But it's very personal. It's very personal. Uh, because, you know, you mentioned oxygen. There's something is called HIF-1. This is very technical, by the way. Uh, imagine that like every cell in your brain, right, gets the private of oxygen when you cannot breathe properly, when you breathe through the mouth and when you snore. You, you, you're not supposed to snore. And this compound builds in your brain and makes sleep less efficient because there's a lack of oxygen circulating in your neurons. Uh, and you need to clear that thing by really improving your breath. And there's something <laughs> quite funny uh, that it looks a bit like uh, one of these fetish movies, but you should sleep with mouth taped basically <laughs> for four weeks and, and a plaster and apparently it clears these things up. But this is actually it's quite new science, uh, but it seems to be very effective on that matter. That's fascinating. It looks like we have a few more questions um, coming in and we're gonna end the interview at 1 p.m. So um, anything that might come in afterwards, um, this would be a great time to check out Davide's uh, Busy at Fit. Um, what is, it's the Facebook group, right? Where they can join. Yeah, yeah the, Facebook, the Facebook group, they, uh, we can write it after in the chat, is uh, Busy Yet Fit community you can join uh, i'll make it free for the people that are watching and the people that get the course <laughs> uh, let me just go with this one uh, are there various type of weight loss based on your metabolism for example i find that my weight loss is like a yo-yo and it's not easy for me to lose very much weight um yeah this is common and this the problem is if you did yo-yo many times you created a, a very vicious inflammation build up in your fat cells so that's a problem because you try to lose weight with the same mechanics over and over and it kept losing efficiency what happened it makes you hungry and hungry and hungry and hungry so if you never try intermittent fasting for sure is a way to go right because every time you do something you've done before your body knows already uh, so it works less and less, diminishing return. If you do something completely new, then you have way, way higher chances of success. Again, Jennifer, um, metabolism is a very big war. With metabolism, we are talking thyroid, okay? We are talking all your assimilation system, so mouth to anus. Uh, is everything healthy? Are you absorbing everything? Uh, or there's inflammation going on? Do you have a leaky gut? That you might have some autoimmune disorders that's very common in women caused by gluten. You might have uh, uh, like a, this guy's Hashimoto uh, autoimmune disease because of too much grains. So uh, it's a very personal question when we're talking about metabolism. What I will need to do on you is 
I have a question like this, full of symptoms. If you pick many of those, there are some metabolic problems. To address a metabolic problem is a mixture of diet, lifestyle, movement, and supplementation. So generally, every person that comes even into my prior 101 coaching, they, if they have decent amount of weight to lose, let's say from, thank you, some, from 20 pounds to 60 and above, I start them, if they've never done it before, with intermittent fasting, lowering carbohydrates, always lowering carbohydrates, increasing walking outside, increasing movement, and going to bed earlier. That's the beginning. And then from there, you build up with supplements, you build up with like stress management strategies and training. But that's the base. That's always the base. Really good advice. How do you recommend... Uh, Carbon hunger between meals when trying to control portion size as you recommended meals. Okay. <laughs> you are exactly like me. I need a monstrous portion. Uh, I would like to say, and everyone will say that's the answer, chew more. I am aware that people may not like that. Uh, right? I'll try it on myself. I, like, I just like a lot of bulk. So my trick is... Uh, raw vegetables, right? I have very big portion of raw vegetables on alternating days. So I have one day where I really go full on on raw vegetables. I might have like, a, I might make like a Mexican salad with raw beans, uh, uh, not raw beans, the cold beans uh, and um, raw onion, raw pepper, salsa, homemade, so tomatoes, uh, tomatoes, parsley, coriander, and a little bit of olive oil. And it really like, it's this big. Right, and then I also add like extra broccoli cooked, and it's like this big, but calories like near nothing. And then I may have a protein source. It could be like some fish or chicken breast. Uh, it it's tricky though because you feel really full and satisfied, but you're gonna feel very hungry in two hours because you gave your stomach so much to digest with so little calories. When if you have a sort of ketogenic, like keto is very very popular ketogenic diet meal, say um, free free eggs cooked in butter, right? And also spoon of coconut oil and a bunch of almonds. Actually, the, the food that you eat is this much, the whole plate. Yet, it's so dense in calories that if you can wait 20 minutes, your appetite cut completely. Why? Because it stimulates your satiety hormone. It's called leptin. And fat really stimulates your satiety hormone a lot. The trick is that you need to wait at least 20 minutes. So what do we do in those 20 minutes? I've got all the tricks. So first of all, you start with um, carbonated water, right? Uh, fizzy water, big glass like that. The bubbles get you this sort of feeling of satiety. You have two big glasses. Let it, let it settle for a second, right? That doesn't work. Step number two, you go decaf coffee. Big cup of black decaf coffee with a little bit of sweetener if you want, or like a dash of like full fat milk if you want. Uh, that is prone to have appetite suppressant. Coffee has appetite suppressant, but you take off the caffeine because you don't want to have too much caffeine these days because that disrupts sleep and so on and so forth. And you don't want to have it after 12 for sure. Uh, so decaf coffee, that's your round two. If decaf coffee also doesn't work, uh, genuinely, either you're in a caloric deficit that is too big, so you're trying to eat too little for the amount of movements, or there could be some something that is related to like your, basically there is some inflammation going on, right? So there is something that probably needs to be discussed with like if you really cannot stop being hungry after having a big meal with fat, that's very important, with fat, and then water and a dick of coffee, and you're still hungry and you're not losing weight, but you're gaining weight, there's some problem that needs to be addressed by nutritionist. Mm. Okay. Uh, then we have, uh, how do I lose 70 pounds? Uh, Amita, uh, you email me. That's how you do that. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> I'm, I'm, actually not, I'm actually not joking. But uh, if you need to lose that much weight, you are surely facing some metabolic problem that requires certain supplementation and possibly some nutritionist like me working together with a doctor uh, because there might be something behind. Uh, and then you give yourself... Uh, a timeline that is 12 to 16 months and you create a very progressive program okay that changes your habit into enjoyable healthy habits because you cannot do something you ate for 16 months you're gonna suicide okay it needs to, you need to find something that you can at least enjoy doing 
decently decently and not so decently like, as as often as once or twice or three times a week okay so it's a process uh, and you need to take it step by step and you need you need not wait it and then you need special advice specialized advice yes mm -hmm. um, uh, have I been doing squats for more than one year, but I still feel that there's still no muscle? Please, kindly, uh, can you recommend how should I do? Okay. Uh, next time you do a set of squats, um, hold something here, okay? And then you're going to spend 10 seconds going down. You're going to hold it 10 seconds at the bottom. You're going to spend 10 seconds going up. Let's see if you can get to 10 reps of that. Okay, <laughs> and I'm saying like you put a, a stopwatch in front of you and it's 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. You get me? Let's see if you can get to 10 reps. Uh, if, if, if you can, if you can, uh, you send me a video. Okay, you join my group, you send me a video and I'll give you a free personal training session online. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it needs to be something heavy though at least a five liter like jug okay otherwise that doesn't count uh thanks a lot appreciate your comments uh, do you know a way to reduce sugar addiction hmm. well I, I was even a smoker so i quit smoking um i quit smoking i quit drugs so like i quit some heavy stuff uh i'm sure you can quit sugar addiction there's a rule when you change habit have you ever did you read uh, the power of habits ali Oh yeah, definitely. So uh, yeah, so what what what's the thing? Like, you have a trigger, right? So you trigger is like, mm, I'm seeing the fridge, there's cake in the fridge. Trigger. Then ritual. I stand up, I open a fridge, cake. Okay, and then reward. Mm, the feeling. Okay, so uh, addiction is just trigger, ritual, reward. Now you want to stop a habit, you need to break one of these parts, but you cannot just say. Oh, not having sugar because you're still gonna have the trigger, so you're still gonna mm, this cake in the fridge, and you're still gonna have the ritual. You're gonna open the fridge and you're gonna say, uh, No, that depletes willpower, okay? And you have a limited amount of lip power every day. You feel a little bit sick, you're a little bit pissed, you had an argument with your loved one, you're gonna have cake. <laughs> you sleep deprived, you're gonna have cake. So, how do we do with this? Well, we make it harder, don't stock sugar in the house, okay? That's harder, mm -hmm. and then uh, we so. Don't the sugar in the house, right? You you have you have been triggered. There's the fridge. You open the fridge. There's no sugar. Mm, what do I have? Let's replace it with something that is still sweet. So in this case, we're gonna use sweetener. We're gonna you gonna look online for um, sweet recipes, uh, zero carb, like keto. Let's go like keto keto recipes or like uh, low carb recipes with whey protein, right? So you you find how to make like a, a zero sugar chocolate cake or like uh, you buy a protein powder and you just protein powder in yogurt, you whisk it and it tastes like like you know like pudding, but it's actually not pudding. It's nearly zero carbs, and so you switch sugar into something that is artificially sweetened. And the trick is that it's not as good. So you won't like, I, I will not have like two kilos of like uh, protein yogurt. I, I will have like a big bowl and it will be amazing with berries, but then I will stop. When I will have a two kilo ice cream, that's the, that's the difference. Because that, that's the thing with sugar, right? So you, if I'm eating protein yogurt, it tastes sweet, so it satisfies me. So the reward is still there. Yet, um, it, I'm, I'm just getting rid of the addictive substance, right? So you, you trick your body. If when I wanted to quit smoking, I got an electronic cigarette and I put a patch and I removed the nicotine and then I removed the nicotine patch and I kept on smoking the non, um, the non non nicotine liquid. So I still had the reward until one day uh, I just forgot it at home and I did the whole day without thinking about it. And I was like, oh, I don't need that anymore. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> advice as well um that that you, when you just switch switch your ideas about what addictions are whether it's sugar i mean i definitely was there too eventually once you start replacing it with those artificial sweeteners it, it isn't as good and you're not gonna you're not gonna crave it you're gonna start craving really healthy foods um okay so i hate to cut everyone off we've got some really wonderful questions streaming wow, i'm gonna try to do the last one in one minute uh we got here eleonora uh i if you're used to uh eating a lot how do you get yourself to eat the recommended amount of calorie without feeling hungry um forget about the recommended like there's no recommended that's like you you are an experiment there's leave the calculations right um if you're feeling hungry and you want to lose weight uh, that's okay. You want to feel hungry towards meals. 
If you finish your meal and you're still hungry, give yourself 20 minutes, as I said, with some water and dig of coffee. I like to have coffee for tea. There are fruit teas that are just made of fruit, and then you can make the tea, and then you can also eat the fruit, and it's really goddamn chewy. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there's flowers in it as well. That's also good for appetite. Then you get to those 20 minutes, the food should settle, the appetite suppressant hormone leptin should be released, and you should be fine. If you are super hungry, there's a problem of leptin resistance. Now, just so women, I'll say women because men don't do that. If you've been dieting a lot and you never had a big, badass, messy meal, that's your problem, right? Mm. right? Sometimes I have women that they exercise too much and they eat like they, they eat like little, 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 little. Then sometimes they eat a little bit more with mini snacks. That doesn't work. You're just digging your grave. Mm -hmm. What you need to do is give yourself mental peace for a month or so. You're gonna gain one or two kilos. And you try to eat super healthy and twice a week you're gonna have a meal that is really big right so i'm talking like four or five eggs or like a tower of homemade pancake okay with thousand calorie plus that resets your leptin right because mini snack of crappy food like chocolate crackers cheese stuff like this uh really decrease your metabolism and increase your appetite so you become leptin resistant that's why you get so hungry uh, what is your email address this has been excellent uh, laura you can go on www.ki-force.com okay that's my I'll post that in in the the comment yeah. section and description as well or, or you can look on facebook for busy yet fit community and you'll find that as well yeah. Um, thank you for your advice. I love listening to Lou. Uh, like I start in my morning with a run or jog and start doing weights and then my protein shake and then start meditation and stretch. Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I envy you. And I try to massage myself at the same time. Um, uh, they, they have a gum or peel or something that makes you dislike the taste of sugar as well. I, I wouldn't go there. <laughs> How do you get shredded? Uh, I am vegetarian and eat Mediterranean diet really want to get shredded for my upcoming proposal wedding look you need to text me uh, getting shredded is a uh, 12 depending on your body fat a 12 to 16 weeks plan I will say where things need to be um, strategic and like you know you can't mess up that's the thing <laughs> like you really need to be consistent and you really need to have a good plan then you get shredded i did it many times for photo shoots and stuff and uh, weddings i i get some people like let me just let me just say this this, this woman here i prepared for a wedding uh, you can see there was like a 12 weeks right same yeah. same principle that we use this i'll show you like this one this is, is a friend of mine that she did uh, uh the challenge with me five kilos she's five kilo lighter look at this from home uh something like something like this as well this other guy is uh, from uh, hong kong this is another friend of mine he lost seven and he actually now is going to run half marathon so <clears throat> you, you see like this intermittent fasting really works that's something that i will say uh intermittent fasting with daily steps and some home training is way to go uh thank you thank you for your answer i'm happy to send you the video where i he's gonna send me the video <laughs> Third, please uh, tell me how we can reduce sleeping time to three hour a day and how we can slow them slow down the metabolism. wow so you, you want to you want to sleep only three hour and you want to slow your metabolism so basically uh you you, you, want, you want to become like a like a sleep deprived a really big person uh, i don't i i just i don't know I, yeah, I don't think that's your area of expertise i don't i don't get <laughs> I, I know i know how to do that but i don't want to tell you <laughs> okay uh, what is your email do you have a gun with a pill uh, thank you so much uh, i think i think that's it right yeah uh, I and uh, what is your email uh, if you are used if you read this how do you get yourself to uh, eat recommended i think i think that's it. Uh, and how do i lose 50 pounds same same answer as the how do you lose 70 and that's what is the okay on oh, this one you can see what is the best time to do exercise uh, also i feel like eating every two hour or so uh, how to control uh, what is the best time to exercise the time where you are going to do it uh, every single time <laughs> this is your best this, this is your best time if you are in control Okay, if you are in control, I will say science will say that wake up 
fasted mild exercise to burn fat and uh, your peak hour when you release testosterone men and women is the same is from 12 to 3 p.m so heavy strength training 12 to 3 p.m that's when i do my live streaming usually and uh, morning some movements some yoga some jogging just walking outside that's best and uh do you know a way to remove okay i think i, I called them on yeah, I think that's great. Oh my gosh, you have answered so many questions. Thank you to <laughs> all of the audience. So let's um, give them a quick rundown on if they're interested in your program, which I hope they are. It's an amazing deal. Um, they, they'll, you're, you're very, very energetic. You're very, very convincing. Um, I hope that yeah, workouts. <laughs> yeah, you know what you're doing. So if you're out there and you're wanting to get in shape, um, Davide is your man. And what we're going to do is we're going to post a link for you to follow to get more information on his Busy Yet Fit course. But also um, let them know what they can do, how they can get in touch with you, what to watch out for, and anything else that the audience should know before we sign off today. Okay. But so um, as I said, if, if you get the course, uh, it does automatically does uh, membership to my private Facebook group. Uh, I still recommend you to follow the video of the course before you get into hours because before my wife was doing some mild workout and now she's four months for pregnancy and she goes crazy <laughs> so it's a little bit hard uh, and me uh, right now i have this no surgery so i actually going very slow <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like this but it's uh, on facebook busy yet fit yeah here community and you'll find it because that's a picture and me you can go here on ki-force.com okay that's my website you can see what do i do you can see what my wife does and there's ways to contact me uh, for sure with whatever problem you have there's an application form as well and um, what else with us. Well, they, get the course, they, they, they follow the link uh, if you want to read something about me uh, that this this book unfortunately is not on sale I just did it on Kickstarter so you might need to text me privately maybe I send a copy <laughs> 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 uh, direct, uh, plenty, plenty of my articles on Lifehack and uh, maybe we'll do something more about sleep because that, that seemed to be a hot topic yeah it is definitely <laughs> hot topic we'll definitely look into that there's there's to be like, people are like yeah <laughs> Okay, everyone, thank you so much for joining us uh, for this exclusive interview with Davide. I hope that this has helped shift your mindset on fitness and how to do so even when gyms are closed or you can't get out or you just have no idea where to start. Be sure to follow the links that I'm going to include after this. I'll put it in the YouTube uh, video description as well as in this chat here. And um, definitely keep an eye out for, for more interactions with Davide. He's going to be around for a while, and we're really excited about this course collaboration with him. So thank you, Davide. This You're was welcome. great. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys, for watching. Thank you very much. Excellent. Uh, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. <laughs> and we're well, signing well, up. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.